Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of this Python for Engineers course or whatever the title is. It keeps changing every time I say it so I can't can't keep it consistent, we'll just roll with it. So last week we introduced the concept of importing modules or importing libraries into Python and that enables us to get a whole different um, set of abilities within Python and it's through that that we can really use it to create some really powerful engineering coding. So we introduced NumPy which is um, a package that enables us to create arrays and that's what it does at its very basic level. From that we're able to use the methods associated with those arrays to do really powerful things. Now when I was editing the video from last week I noticed that I conflated or I confused the phrase function and method a few times and that's a bit naughty of me because they mean two distinct things and we're going to go over that. I'm going to go through this next lecture and then we're going to go over that the following lecture. So what we're going through today and we're going to continue with NumPy arrays and we're going to look at different means of extracting smaller elements outside of those arrays and then what we're going to go to on after that is understanding how we use the methods and the parameters and the attributes associated with NumPy arrays and how methods are distinct from functions. So that's going to be another whole lecture on its own and we'll get to that after we've gone through this following piece about NumPy arrays. So this week is probably going to be two smaller lectures. Like I say, this one that's just about to come is based upon how we get bits out of NumPy arrays and then before we go any further, we've got to really learn some more semantics of programming. Now, it might seem a little bit like I'm going through and teaching you different parts of Python in a semi-haphazard fashion. And part of that is slightly true. I'm sort of learn I'm thinking about the things that you guys need to develop as I'm trying to develop a course from the ground up. Um, secondly, it's such a big concept, it's such a big course and fundamentally Python is a range of different tools and abilities that you guys need to learn. So I can't just teach you how to use NumPy in one go, we can start to learn it but to go any further we're going to have to learn some more basics and other areas and that's just how this, this, this uh, course in engineering Python coding is going to go little bits of one package, a little bit of another package, and we'll keep building upon those tools as we go along. So let's move over to the board, or not to the board rather, to the um, to my Jupyter notebook window. So I've got a new Jupyter notebook window, and we'll do the very first thing that we did, uh, or not the very first thing, we'll do, we'll import that array NumPy. So not importing array NumPy's, we will import the package num NumPy. So I'm going to import NumPy as NP. Okay, first actually I'm going to restart my kernel because I was using this window earlier just to do something else. So I'm going to restart my kernel and I'm going to import NumPy. So I've now got NumPy available to use. And we learned the syntax for making NumPy arrays. Well, we learned lots of different means last week. We learned that we can make arrays just based upon lists. So I'm going to make an arbitrary array. And I'll call it rather imaginatively arbitrary array. And let's just say it's a numpy array, so np.array. And then I've got to put a list in there. So let's go say 6, 24, 6. I'm just making these numbers up as I go along. So I've got seven numbers now in my numpy array. Now Last week we learned that we could pick parts out of lists, or the week before we learned we could pick parts out of lists. We can do the same. If you want to get the first element, that is the zeroth um, index for this NumPy array. So I can extract that. So we'll say like lists. So we can extract things from the index, just starting at zero. So, and I'll use a, an F string to print this because F strings help us. So we'll say print. 
And let's say the first element is There you go. So the first element is six, and we know that's correct. We can then just do the same for the second element. The second element is, here we go, 24. And then we can see that's true by looking at the, the array up here. We can also, like lists, we can um, start from the end. So we, so we can start from the end, the end position being minus one, and then we can pick up that last element. So we can say okay so the last element is 67 and to get out the penultimate or the second to last element my camera is just oh my camera's back let's uh Oh, excellent. Let's uh, sort that out. There we go. That's working again. So let's see if this might happen a few times today. We'll see. Um, okay, so the to get this penultimate element, we change this to minus two. And we see that we get out a 22 there. So we can pick out individual elements really easily. That's sort of relatively simple syntax. We can also take selections of elements within there. And this is using slicing. So we can slicing, which is where we use the syntax. We have a start, um, a stop, and a step size. Let's make this a markdown cell. Okay, so we're gonna say, that if we wanted to extract every other element from this array, so we want to take, say, 6, 6, 13, and 67. Then the syntax for that, we want to start at the very beginning. So we can say start at zero, and we'd like to go to the end. So we'll let, well, let's say minus one for now. Um, and then we'll say we want to go in steps of two. So we'll print out every other element, and it's given us six, six, and 13, and it hasn't given us 67. Now that's because the slice, uh, the slice notation is exclusive of the end point. So if you want to go to the end, rather than putting minus one, we put nothing there, okay? And by exclusive of the end point, let's, uh, let's do another example in a second. So let me just take this out. I've taken that out, and if I don't include it, it says go all the way to the end. And that correctly gives me six, six, 13, and 67. So say I want to take out these four elements now, six, 24, six, and one. So we'll say the end point is not excluded in the slice. And what I mean is let's just take this down and print it. So we'll say the first four. So the first four elements are starting at zero. So we've got zero, one, two, three. So if I go to three, I could put one here as my step size, but it will default to one anyway. So if I get rid of that, what this is going to do, it will start at zero, and it's saying the end is three, stepping in one. But because the end is not included in the slice, it goes six, 24, six, it gets to the position of index three, and it knows not to include that. So what we do is we just replace that with one more. So we go up to four here. So the first four elements are six, 24, six, and one. 
Okay. If we want to go all the way to the end, like we've got here, so we have the, we just disclude the endpoint, then we go to the end of the element, or go to the end of the array automatically. So if we want the last four, 1, 13, 22, and 67, We'll say if it's not included, the endpoint is assumed to be the end of the array, and we'll say bracket inclusive. Let's move that up a little bit, and let's make me a little bit smaller so I'm not on your screen. There we go. Move my mic out of the way. Okay, so if it's not included in the slice, uh, if it's not included in the slice inputs, the endpoint is assumed to be the end of the array, and I'll put in brackets, it's included. So what do I mean by that? I'll say if we wanted to get from our array, we want 1, 13, 22, and 67. That's the first indexes. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to go from 3, colon, and then we'll just leave the endpoint off, and that will go all the way to the end. And I'm not going to put any text in here. I'm just going to say arbitrary array. And we said three to the end. So that gives us 1, 13, 22, 67, which is what we wanted. If I wanted to go in step sizes, but I want to go to the end, I can just disclude the endpoint as well. So let's have a look. So we can go here and let's say I want to get all the way to the end in steps of two. Uh, let's go from this position. So we're going to go from number two. So we're going to go from zero, one, two. So I want, I think this is going to give me six, 13, and 67 now. So let's try running that. Six, 13, and 67. So we can get different parts out of these arrays by slicing. So we can do that for a one dimensional array. That's fairly easy. And at the end of last week, we included. Uh, the ability to create NumPy ND arrays, which are our means of storing matrices in Python. And so we can, ex we can extend this notation, uh, or we can extend this slicing methodology to extract parts out of those ND arrays. So let's extend this. Let's try, let's just make a little note here. Again, because I think you guys should be writing down your own notebooks as you're going along and sort of making notes in here using some of the markdown cells. I'm sort of assuming you guys are, are pausing, writing your own, and, and putting notes in and around it, and playing around with it, because obviously coding is super fun. Or at least it is if you're a massive nerd like me. So we'll say here, we, uh, we will extend, so we'll say slicing for ND arrays. So for a 1D array, we said that the, the way that we did it was 1D array. So we had our array and then we just put our indices that we wanted. So start, stop, step, and that's what we had. For a two dimensional array, we just have to do it again afterwards. So we'll say we've got our array and we do start, stop, and then step, and then we do it again afterwards. We put a comma, start, stop, step. And in general, if we've got an array that's got more than two dimensions, then we do it like this. Oh, steady on. So an ND array, well, we just repeat this as many times as we need to. So for this course, we're going to stick to just doing this for two-dimensional arrays. And in general, for engineering, we tend to stick with 2D arrays. In my coding history, what I've sometimes used three-dimensional arrays if I need an extra dimension. Um, I have on occasion used four and five-dimensional arrays. 
they get really difficult to think about um, because you it's very it's quite difficult to think about what a three dimensional array really does. Two D you can write on a piece of paper. Three D you can write on one piece of paper and then extend it back. Four uh, D and five D are a real minefield to sort out in your head. There was another word I wanted to say that was MF, but I didn't use it on this video. So we're going to stick to just looking at these two dimensional arrays. So we're going to make a random integer matrix, which is what we learned how to do last week. So we'll say make a random integer matrix. And we're going to call it imaginatively, I'll call it random matrix. So this was numpy, we used the random part of numpy, and we used the rand int part. So this is something we learned how to do last week, so I'm not going to go through it again. We had nine was the maximum size, the maximum um, number that we wanted to go to. And the size, let's make it a five by five for good fun. And let's print this out. So I've now got this random matrix here. Okay, so I can pick parts out of this and I... Okay, I had a camera failure there. Um, the setup at home is not quite as fancy as the setup at my office. So sometimes this happens, but where I got to with this is that we constructed a random integer matrix and we're gonna use slice notation to take things out. Now, what I didn't mention up here is this is, this is how we should take out elements if we want to get a sub matrix out. If, however, we just provide one slice, it's going to assume that we are talking about the rows that we want out of this matrix. So we could say if we just want the, say, first row out, we could use slice notation. Let's say first row only. So let's say first row is equal to uh, random matrix. And I'm going to say it's equal to one. So let's print this out. Okay, so we can get that. And I've put first row there. I've been a old old school MATLAB lover. Um, I should have put zero, obviously, to get the first row out. So we can get that out, and we can do the same with the other rows. If I want to take, say, a subsection, say I want this 4884 out here, um, let's split this cell here, actually, because otherwise my random matrix is going to get overwritten. So this is handy. If, if I want to split this, the reason I want to split this cell is because the um, if I run it again, it's going to change the matrix. So I'm going to click here. I'll click split cell. Okay, so now I've kept random matrix in memory. And if I run this, this, this works before. So I'm going to just print the random matrix again, actually. So let's put this here. Okay, so I've got my random matrix. And what I now want to get, I want to get 4884 out. So let's see how we can do that. So we can use this slice notation. So we'll say this is a sub matrix. So the rows that I want out are going to be 0, 1, I want 2, 3, and I'll put 4 because I've got that's going to be the last entry that's not included, and it'll be the same for the columns. So let's print this out, the sub matrix is. Okay, so I've got that out correctly, four, eight, and eight, four. We can also use this slice notation to change elements of the matrix. So let's go here and I'm gonna, um, I'm going to do something in a couple of steps here. So I'm, I'm going to highlight something at the same time as, as showing you how to change elements. So this slice notation, whenever we take slices of NumPy arrays, these create views of the existing array. So I'm not creating a copy, I'm not creating new data, I'm not putting a new memory allocation that stores this somewhere. All I'm doing is I'm creating a snapshot of that part of random matrix. So if I change random matrix, I'm going to change different parts of this sub matrix. 
Well, so let's just do this. Let's say that random matrix. And what should I change? I'm going to change everything in this third column to be equal to, say, 99. So let's say every row, and it's actually the second column. So it's what's well, third column, but it's 0, 1, 2. So it's index 2. Let's make it equal to 99. I don't know if this is going to work, actually. Let's try, because it's I've got to populate. So this is a 5 by 1. I'm, I'm going to replace it with a single value. That might not work. Oh, it seems to work. Um, so OK, that's worked there. And if I now go down to a new line, I've just run this again. That was silly. So let me run this here. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to pop this down here. So if I now run here, I've kept my, this is my random matrix. I've got my first row out and my, I've got my sub matrix out there. So I've changed my random matrix now. Let's do print random matrix. So I've changed that whole central column to 99. And if I now do the same with the first row, print I've just, that central column is equal to 99. If I print that sub matrix, we know what's going to happen. We know that it's going to have two values equal to 99. So what we've learned there is that slices create views. They don't create a copy of the data. So if we want to create a copy of the data, if we want to create a sub matrix that we can then make sure remains equal to the original data that we took, then we use something else called fancy indexing. Again, there are many ways to take copies of data. You can take copies by doing some other things in and around slices, but the ways that I'm teaching this is that we're going to take copies by doing um, take, taking fancy indexing instead. So fancy indexing, the way that we work, if instead of providing those start, stop, end um, indexes into the square brackets, if instead of that we provide NumPy arrays of integers, then that enables us to take out data and it takes out a perfect copy of it. So let's say here, let's start again. So we're going to do fancy indexing. That is how it is these are spelt. <laughs> I'm really struggling with typing at the moment. It's probably because I've you know got two broken fingers. But we can pass multiple ind indexes to access multiple um, elements at once. And the beauty of doing this is that we create a copy of the data. And it's important to note that when we do this, whatever the shape of those elements or the, the shape of the arrays that we put into get the, these fancy indexes out. And this will become clear when we do an example. That's the shape of the data out. OK, so the way that we're going to do that, I'm going to create a new random matrix. Let's wait that I create it up here. Um, again, it's just the same as it was before. So it's a five by five, and we're going to get some different parts out. So I'm going to write two. I'm going to write a rows and a column, um, a rows and a column NumPy array. So I'm going to create some indexes that we wish to extract. We'll say the rows are equal to a NumPy array. And we'll make the rows nice and easy. We'll say 0, 1, 2. So that's the first, the second, and the third row. 
and our columns by contrast we'll say well we'll make it a slightly different uh, we'll make it the, we'll make it the same size because it has to be um, for the moment and we'll say two one three so we're going in a slightly different order here so we're now going to say that our subset of this matrix is equal to the random matrix and we're going to use the same square bracket notation but we'll say rows and cols in here so then print and we'll print out this subset okay so we've got our random matrix being printed and we've got the rows and columns 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, and we've extracted some subset here. We've got 6, 3, 6. So let's figure out how this matches up. So we've got three elements out. Now, when you provide fancy indexes that are both of the same shape and both of the same dimension here, and then what it's done is it's paired these up. So it's gone, well, the first element is going to be 0, 2. So that's this row and it's column two, which is this one. Remember zero, one, two, and then we've got one, one, so that's here, which gives us three, and then two, three, which gives us this one here. So we've got six, three, six. So the shape of the output is gonna be the same as these that we just put in. So it was, a, it was a single row that has three elements, and that's what we get out here. So if we now, then do something to our random matrix. Let's say random matrix, and we're gonna make every element equal to 99. And we're gonna print out our subset. Okay, we've changed our random matrix, but we haven't changed the subset that we took out. And that's because using this notation, using NP arrays to input is this idea of fancy indexing, and it doesn't make a, it doesn't uh, make a view. It makes a copy of the data, so that's going to be really useful for lots of different things that we're going to do in the future. It's slightly different how we want to take out subsets of matrices, though. It's slightly harder to do that with this sort of format. So let's go back up here, make a new random matrix, and change our subset. So I'm going to get rid of these rows because we've we've shown that we have created a copy of the data rather than creating an image, so I can just get rid of these parts. The reason why we can only get out a, at the moment, using the methodologies that we have, we can only get out rows. Now, see, I could get out all of the different parts down here. Say I wanted the lower, say the first two columns and the lower three rows, so I want six, six, two, five, six, and one. I could do that using this methodology here, so let's say um, this was going to be, so I've got two elements coming out of the third row. So that's going to be two, two, three, 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 and four, four. So I could do that and then I need, this, I need the six elements to come out here. So this is going to be um, three, four, three, four, So if I now run this, my subset gives me correctly the parts that I wanted, 5, 1, 1, 0, and 3, 2. But it's the wrong shape, so it's not really a sub-matrix here. So this way around isn't really the right way of doing that, because what we know what we want. We know that we want the last three rows, and we want those last two columns, so we can do that. But the way that we're going to do it, we've got to turn the rows from being a row vector into being a column vector. So we're going to do that. And the way that we do that is by using a numpy method called np or numpy.newaxis. So we're going to do that slightly differently. So I spoke about attributes and parameters earlier. We can use those to look at the shape of these things that we've just made. And we'll talk, I'm going to explain all of that in the next lecture. But for the time being, you can know that if you have a numpy array, you can look at the shape of it, which tells you how many rows it's got in different directions by typing the object name, which for our case here would be rows, coles, or random matrix dot shape. So let's do print random matrix dot shape, print 
rows.shape, print coals.shape. Okay, so we've got a five by five and we've got a six by six here. Sorry, we've got two six by ones here. So let's say we want out, like I said, that this last lower right, so five one one zero three two, or whatever it's going to be when I when I rerun this. So the rows that we want out, I mean, we had that correct. This was two um, two to well two to the end really. Um, let's keep this. Let's say it's two three, four, we'll keep it simple for now. And then the columns that I wanted out, so I've got two of them, is going to be three and four. If I run this, let's try and run this, it doesn't like it because of the wrong shape at the moment. So we need to turn this row matrix into being a column matrix. So if we print this again, they're both just row vect vectors at the moment. So the way that I can turn rows into being a, into being a column vector, is I can use something called np.newaxis. So I'm going to just show you the syntax here and then we're going to substitute it back up. So I'm going to say row as column is equal to row. And the way that we do this, so I say it's equal to row and I'm going to select things. I want everything in that axis and I'm going to say np.newaxis. And this tells me to create an additional dimension for this particular item and I'll do print row as column and then print uh, row as column dot shape that's because they're called rows not row that's why so down here it said row is not defined it's because up here I had this written as row whereas it was called rows so we start that again. Okay, so it's now turned this into a three by one. It's turned it into this column vector, which is what we want. So this is what I need to put in. Rows, open bracket, colon, comma, mp.newaxis. So I'm gonna put this in here. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this cell. I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna get rid of this cell. So let's run this, there we go. So let's put a space in between here, prints. There we go, so now what I've tried to do is I've tried to create the rows that I want, two, three, four, three, four, and I get, now I get the correct subset out, I get that sub matrix. And because we know this notation that we're using now, this notation takes a copy of the data and it means that I can do whatever I want to this original matrix and it's not gonna change anything in, in the one that I've just made. Can I turn this into a slice? Let's see what happens. It doesn't like it in this case. Okay, so I can turn this two to four. So we have to be careful that we can use the correct syntax here. So let's say two, comma three, comma four. I'm, just, I'm learning some of this for this methodology here. I, I used to use a slightly more convoluted way of getting different parts out of matrices. So this was new to me um, learning this. Learning this, um, So I was seeing what I could do in terms of the syntax. So say now I want to get out the inner three by three. Okay, so what? Uh, let's see, what do I turn my rows and columns to? So I've got to put three numbers in here and what do I turn them to? Okay, and we run this, we see that we get 0, 3, 5, 3, 8, 8, 4, 1, 0. So we've got that correct. Well done if you got that correct. If you didn't, have a think about where that where you went wrong, where you slipped up. Maybe it's just not remembering you start with 0 in Python. Okay, so we can use that and we got that sub matrix out and those are now no longer a picture of what the data was and it's sorry, no longer a view. They are a picture of what the data was at that point. So it's a copy of the data at the point that you took it out. So we've now got means that we can get different parts out of matrices. We can make views by doing slice indexing, and we can create copies of data by doing fancy indexing. 
And there's one more that I want you to know about, which is this idea of, it's called Boolean indexing. Boolean indexing is actually just a, another means of fancy indexing, but rather than going by the indexes that, that tell you where in the matrix to take things from, you're going to use a logical value that tells you, I'll take something depending on its value basically. So I'm going to make a new random matrix and I'm going to give them slightly larger values now. And Boolean indexing is super handy in what in and often much more useful and much more used than sort of plain fancy indexing. So let's write this here. So let's say Boolean indexing. So we'll use this when we want to take elements based on either their value or the value of other elements in an, in an equally sized array. So let's make a much, I don't want to say much bigger, I'm going to make a, a slightly larger um, matrix and let's make it, let's make a smaller matrix actually and we'll make all of the values slightly, slightly larger in terms of magnitude. So I'm going to make a new random matrix, let's say random matrix is equal to np.random, np.random.randint and I'm going to make the maximum size 100 now and size is going to be 3 by 3. So I'm going to have a 3 by 3 matrix and I'm going to print it out. So I've got these different parts in here now. Now I can just say I want to select elements and I only want the parts that are less than 50. So I'm going to make a new set of data, a new array, I'll say less than 50. And that's going to be equal to the random matrix. And I use the same square brackets to tell, tell Python that you're taking subsets out. And rather than putting in an index, I'm going to use these Boolean indices. And I'm going to say, take random matrix wherever random matrix is less than 50. And then we're going to print it out for good measure. So print this part in here. Here we go. So this was our matrix. Let's go through and see. 0 is less than 50, so it's taken it. 29 is less than 50, so it's taken it. 71 isn't. 56 isn't. 86 isn't. 56 isn't. 51 isn't. 41 is, so it's taken it. And 95 isn't, so it's not taken it. So it completely changes the shape of the things you've taken, but it's created this um, it's created this new array based upon them. So this part that we input here is this is what's called a Boolean array, a Boolean array. So this random matrix less than 50. Let's see what this looks like on its own. So let's um, let's just print it out. So this is the bit that did the selection. So let's print this out on its own. Here we go. So we've now printed out our matrix and it's now come up with a true or false, which is a Boolean array based upon whether it's less than 50 or not. So we can see here this matches up. It's true where I think parts are less than 50 and it's false where they're not. So because this has created a, an array that we can use to select other things, I can now I can make a second random matrix at the same time. So let's say second random matrix. Um, just for the sake of it, let's say it's smaller. Let's say this is an array that goes up to 25 is its maximum and is of size three by three. So instead of printing out this logical array here or this Boolean array, I'm gonna print out the parts of this second random matrix where the first random matrix is less than 50. Okay, so let's print out the second random matrix as well, actually, because otherwise we can't see what's going on. So this is my first random matrix, and this is my second one. So let's go through 90, 46 is less than 50, so it's going to print out the element that exists in the second one at that point, so 8. 50 is not less than 50, 17 is less than 50, so we've got 19, 44, yep, yeah, so we get 24, 99, nope. 85 nope, 76 nope, 28 is, so we get this element 12 out there. 
So this idea of Boolean indexing is really useful. Okay, so we'll often find that we've got uh, a set of attributes that exist for a given uh, set of data, for example. So you might have a, um, a an aircraft wing. This happens quite a lot. So we have an aircraft wing and we've got parameters defined versus span. And you might want to do an operation or apply some twist to the wing, but you only want to apply it outboard of a certain point. So if we then have got, say, a an array that defines our spanwise position from zero to one, say a non-dimensional spanwise position, and you want to apply your twist from the 30% out, you would do some Boolean indexing to only change things based upon that first index. So this is really useful by changing or grabbing parts of an array based upon another. And by when I say you can you can change parts based upon another, I could here rather than just printing this, let's uh, so here I'm printing the second random matrix parts that are bigger than that. Let's take this out. And I'm going to say second random matrix And instead of printing those parts out, I'm going to make them equal to 999. I just choose 999 because it's a nice visible number. Okay, so this is my first random matrix, the one that we're changing things conditionally based upon. This is my second random matrix, which is sort of, you know, didn't really have anything to do with this, except for the fact that we then took this second one and we changed the elements where in this first one they were less than 50. We've changed the elements in the second equal to 999. Okay, I just choose those numbers. There's no significance other than it being the equivalent of 911 in the UK. Um, just because 999 and 99 are easy numbers to see and they tend not to occur naturally um, when we're doing things. So they're useful for programming for that reason. So we've gone through different means we can get parts out of NumPy arrays. We've gone through slicing. So slicing takes a um, a view of the original array. And what that means is that we can take a view, we can supply this slice with start, stop, and step. And by doing that, we are taking a snapshot, sorry, not a snapshot, we are taking a view of that array. And then if we change that original array, so too does the slot, any variables, any objects that we've made from that slice, they also change. So then we, instead of doing that, we can use this idea of fancy indexing. So instead of supplying start, stop, and end, we explicitly define the the via integers the rows and columns that we want to take out. So if we supply them as just NumPy one-dimensional arrays, we're going to get a big set of numbers out the same shape as that one-dimensional arrays. And if we want to get a random, if we want to get a sorry, if we want to get a sub matrix out, we've got to use this slightly contrived nomenclature here. So what we're going to do, and um, what will be useful, is create a little function that does this for us. Now I wrote this earlier, and in order to do that, we need to understand what functions are. So we're going to talk about that. Um, before we go ahead with that, it would be suitable to take a step back and just talk a little bit about what object-oriented programming is, what objects are, what methods are, what classes are, what parameters, um, what attributes are, okay? Because some of this can be confusing, and like I say, I catch myself using the wrong words occasionally, so I want to go through and lay those out for you properly. And it's gonna help you when we use some inbuilt methods of NumPy arrays, if you know what we're really doing. Because when I started to learn Python, I came from being pretty damn good at MATLAB, and starting to use it just like I would use MATLAB. And that meant that I could use these ideas of methods, but I didn't really know what they were, and I didn't really know how they were any different from using a function. So we're gonna leave this lecture here today, and then I'm gonna go on and, and I'm gonna record a second lecture that explains, well, what is object-oriented programming, as best as I can describe it. And then we're gonna talk about what objects, what methods are, what classes are, because they're really important, because you can use Python without really knowing what a class is, but you're probably utilizing them in order to do things. So we're going to talk all about that, and then hopefully we'll be able to move on with that knowledge to 
actually really use NumPy for its most powerful um, parts, which are effectively using all of those methods to make insights about NumPy arrays without having to write our own code. And we're then going to move on, we'll start plotting stuff. We'll use, say, we might learn how to use pandas to create big data arrays, and then we'll move on from there. So hopefully that's been a more information about NumPy as we go along today. Um, we're going to start to be able to do some more useful things pretty soon, okay? So next week, um, we're going to be able to actually take some data and plot it and make some observations, do some fitting to that data, hopefully. Um, but before then, we need to go through a little bit of theory about how Python works, and that has the potential to be a little bit boring. I'll try and make it interesting. Um, like I say, it has the potential to be boring. I find this stuff absolutely fascinating. This is amazing. And coming at this as someone who sort of learned how to program as an undergrad by hacking my way through things, and not literally, but sort of figuring things out and problem solving, it's been so helpful for me now as a somewhat older 34-year-old to really learn the theory of the code that I wish I'd known back when I was in your shoes. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to teach you the fundamentals of how this stuff works such that you can apply it properly and correctly moving forward. Okay, so I hope that's been informative. Um, sorry about the video edits in this video. There will be some for questions in the video. I hope you've been answering them correctly as we've been going along. And as always, if there's questions, complaints, queries, put it on Slack or put a comment on the YouTube video. I'll see you guys soon.